Thank you. you. May be seated. Please uh, take your Bibles, turn to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 1 to 11 this evening. Philippians chapter 1. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Even it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds and in defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye are all partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Our Father, we want to thank thee this evening for thy word. We ask that thou would give us the confidence that we need to trust in thee to do exactly what thou hast promised. We know thou art faithful, thou art true, thou art holy, thou art just, and we ask thou would teach us from thy word this evening those things thou would have us learn. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Philippians was one of Paul's uh, prison epistles. Uh, Philippi is in Macedonia. If you remember, the Macedonian vision? Well, Philippi is in Macedonia. We have two different imprisonments of the Apostle Paul, and this is from the first imprisonment, I believe. We have Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon are those groups, the four epistles, which are part of the prison epistles. The Apostle Paul wanted to go to Rome. I'm not sure if he wanted to be a prisoner in Rome, but he wanted to go to Rome. And in God's providence and God's sovereignty, God took him to Rome. If we remember in, in Romans chapter Romans chapter 1, verses 10 and 10 to 12, he reminds us, he reminds the saints in Rome that he wanted to come. So if you look at Romans chapter 1, verses 10 to 12, this is where Paul says, making requests, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end, ye may be established. That, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Church of Philippi in prison. Now, think of this. I'm going to read a few verses from a prisoner. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Again, this is a prison epistle, remember. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Here the Apostle Paul, perhaps is in the worst situation, the worst place one could be, and yet he's so praising and blessing God. Later on in the book of Ephesians, rather in the book of Philippians, in chapter 4, 
Paul is encouraging the saints of Philippi, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. In verse 11 of Philippians chapter 4, not that I speak in respect of what I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Paul was content in a place that most would consider very unpleasant. Think of the places we are in our lives tonight, the places we've been, the places we might go. But yet the Apostle Paul was content. He was content there. In Colossians, Paul, the prisoner, again we have Colossians is another prison epistle, the same grouping of these other four. Colossians chapter 2, verses 10, verse 10. Ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. And in verse 3 of chapter 3, For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. The Apostle Paul, who God used to pen this epistle to the Philippian church, was a man who had his heart, his mind, on things above, and not on things of this earth. We see that he is beginning his epistle to the church of Philippi with his name, and also the name of, of Timotheus. Paul, as you know, means a little, and Timothy or Timotheus means honoring God. And Paul did have his change name his name changed from Saul to Paul. This is the great Apostle Paul, who whose name means little but yet who's a great man of faith. But yet he did not have confidence in his own self. He did not have confidence in his own flesh. But his name means little, and he's writing to the, and he said he's writing to the servants of Christ. He's identifying himself as a servant of Christ. This idea of servant is, is someone who's obliged to another, the doulos. We've all heard, heard this word doulos before. And he's a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, the name Jesus in the New Testament, the name Joshua in the Old Testament, they both mean the same, they both mean the same thing. Jehovah is salvation. That's what the name of Jesus means. Jehovah is salvation. And Jesus Christ, we want to put the names together if we can. The Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jehovah is salvation, and Christ means the anointed one, a very specific point to the Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah. There is no other. The people in the world today are looking for answers to deliverance by other sources other than the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will fail. And he's writing to all the saints, all the saints in Philippi. Now, a saint is a holy one. Someone that has put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are people today who believe that saints have to be canonized. Saints have to pass some tests. But sadly, those saints have failed to pass the biggest test, the threshold of the sin factor of what their status is in life. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And these people, these groups, these specific church, this specific organization, the Church of Rome, says, we're going to decide who a saint is. A genuine saint is someone who's put their faith and trust in Christ and Christ alone. And the Apostle Paul here is writing to saints, the saints that were in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. And he continues on his address to them. He gives them a greeting, a, a Hebrew greeting and a Greek greeting. Paras and shalom, where we have grace and peace. Grace and peace unto you, 
grace and peace unto you from our from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to understand the source of grace and the source of peace. We know, as, as, we, as I said the verse before, if I bear grace, are you saved? Grace is receiving something that is not deserved. Whereas mercy is receiving, not receiving something that is deserved. And the source of the grace, the source of peace, is from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. These two are inseparable. They're part of the Trinity. Jesus Christ is God. That's the deity of Christ. We have the deity of the Holy Spirit, the deity of Christ. We have the three in one, the doctrine of the Trinity. We, have, we see the deity here in verse 2. The idea of peace. We have the idea of tranquility. God wants us to be tranquil. God wants us to have peace with ourselves. Peace, the peace of God and the peace with God. We, he wants us to have that peace. When we think of, of peace in the sense of, on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the broader range, it's an exemption from war. There are different wars, conflicts around the world, and those countries that are involved with those war, wars don't have a earthly peace. Of course, on a different level, there is a spiritual war occurring, a spiritual battle. Not with flesh and blood, not with tanks, not with cannons, not with bombs, but with a prince and the power of the air. And this, we have to have victory over those enemies. So that we can have and realize the peace of God. And Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. And by application, we can claim the verses, all the verses of Scripture. From, from the first, first book of the Bible, Genesis, to the last book of the Bible, Revelation. We can claim all those verses. We can apply them in different ways. And they talk about different things. Or they, there are different time periods. But there's different principles that one can glean from the different passages of the whole scripture. The whole Bible is for us. The Bible tells us the things of the Old Testament are written for our examples, for our learning. That's what the, that's what the Old Testament is for. So we can learn. There's many things in the Old Testament we could benefit from today, principles we could follow. If we didn't have the Bible in its entirety, we would be incomplete. But God has given us the complete Bible. And here, the Apostle Paul, remember in prison, in verse 3, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. He's being grateful. He's thanking God. He's showing gratitude that God is bringing them to their minds. And so when God brings people to our minds, as, as the, the Apostle Paul does, he's going to pray for them, as we'll see in the next verse. But... In Romans chapter 1 verse 9, the Bible, the Bible says, Romans chapter 1 verse, verse 9, For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of, the, of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. See, God, Paul was thanking God for bringing them to remembrance. And Paul was praying for them. And as, as verse 4 says of the book of Philippians, chapter 1, Always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. The idea of always, at all times. At all times, he's remembering them. And the idea of every, that, that deals with the idea of every, it's very specific, individually. God, God brings was bringing some of the saints in Philippi to his mind. And the, every individual, every prayer of mine, every individual prayer of mine, for you all make a request with joy. 
that's what he was doing. He was thank he was there in prison. God was bringing to him the, the minds, the, the people that he knows, and he was praying for them. Now, prayer is very important. There are several people that we need to pray. There's we have there's a as you know the, the prayer list is a, a big sheet of paper with small print, and uh, there's a lot of people on that prayer list that have to be pray, prayed for. We just added, we just added, added Mrs. Ellis to the prayer list tonight. We have to pray for her. We have different different family members of the pastor that have to be prayed for. All of them, in fact. You know, think of the girls. Think of Megaly, Evangeline, Amana, Anastasia, Natanya. Those ladies need prayer. Their mother died. I was I was um, I saw Natanya recently not in the department. I saw Evangeline recently. And she looked, understandably, a little bit distressed about something. I don't know why, I mean, I, I didn't ask her, but I was thinking of something when I saw her. I was thinking that she is here, she was at the manse, and the reason why is the, the people, there were people that were missing from the manse because her mother died. Her father wasn't there. Her grandfather, I mean, pardon me, her grandmother wasn't there. And so she was thinking about the missing people. And then she had, there were four other people in the house that were there because her mother died. There was her sister, her fiancé, and then my wife and I. And so we were there, and here she's looking at, I mean, she sees all these four people. Not that she, she likes the four people. She probably likes one of them more than the other three, but... Uh, but she needs prayer. Her mom, her mom died. All the girls' moms died. And we got to remember the young men, the boys, Tolly and Isaiah, Sebastian, Elijah, Theo, Nehemiah, Philemon, and Ariel. We have to remember those young men in prayer. When God brings them to our minds, we have to pray for them. And then. Mrs. Wren and Stan and Joan Wren who are caring for her now as God brings them to her minds. I'm sure the Apostle Paul had different people that were at the forefront of his mind, at the forefront of his mind when he was there in prison. And sometimes in, in isolated situations, we can think a little bit better. Not that we want to be in prison, not that we want to be in extreme isolation, but perhaps we have to deliberately take some time, as we sang at the beginning of the service, sweet hour of prayer, you know, an hour of prayer. Can we spend an hour in prayer? Maybe 15 minutes? But a certain interval of time in prayer so we can be free from the distractions of this world and be praying to God, like the Apostle Paul. He was praying. He was praying always, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. Now again, in another prison epistle, in Colossians, he says a very similar thing over in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 9. He says this to the church of Colossae. He says, For this cause... We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So he's, he's telling this to uh, not just the church of Philippi, but church of Colossae. I'm sure other churches too. He's praying for other people. The people, that in, the people that came into his life. The people that he had the opportunity to probably win many to the Lord. I had a, we had a sad encounter with a young lady, or like a child, almost a child, maybe a 10-year-old, um, not too long ago. And, and we, asked, we asked her where she go to church, and she didn't go to church. But almost weeping, she said she wanted to. Her mother, perhaps her father, just take her once a year, which perhaps is in two or three weeks from now, and they probably take her to the wrong type of church. Pray for little Susie. 
She can't go by herself because she's 10 years old or thereabouts. And there's other people like that. We have to pray for them. And another thing Paul mentions here, he's praying for them, making requests with joy. And in verse 5 he says, for your fellowship in the gospel. From the first day until now, fellowship in the gospel. Fellowship, that's having a common thing, a common denominator. That's what we have to have our fellowship in. Fellowship in the gospel. The gospel, the good news. And that's what the basis of our fellowship must be upon. Paul was saying to the church of Philippi, he was thankful that he could have fellowship in the gospel. There's nothing really else we should have fellowship in. Yes, there are things we have common in common with other people. But ultimately, with the saints of God, with the saints of Christ, that's where our fellowship has to be. That's where the things are in common, the most common we have. Because of what Christ has done for us. Because we are believers. We get a fellowship one with another. Genuine Christian fellowship. And he says, from the first day until now. The fellowship didn't stop. It started, and it didn't stop. From the very first day, the Apostle Paul met the saints of Philippi. From the very first day, they became a born-again Christian, those saints. To the very moment he was writing to them, he was able to have fellowship. Have something that was in common with them. Even though they were not in the same place, there was like that, that unity they had with one another. We could think of we could work our way across the United States of different people we know who are believers. Then we go across the world to different continents and remember and reflect upon all those saints we know. There's some of them mentioned in the bulletin board out there, and there's others that aren't there that we know. We can have fellowship with them. That's the basis of our Christianity, is the fellowship we can have one with another. It's all founded on the rock, who is Jesus Christ. Without him, we can have nothing. You know, we know that God is faithful. God is true. But in verse 6, Paul writes to the church of Philippi, being confident of this very thing. Paul had confidence. The idea of confidence in this verse you know, is, is a, an action that took place in the past and yet is continuing on into the future. So we're confident. Being confident of this very thing. The idea of confidence is to have trust Trust in something. The Apostle Paul had complete trust, he had complete confidence in the Church of Philippi, actually in the Lord Jesus Christ, he was confident in this very thing that he which began a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The idea of half begun it comes from the very start from the moment of their salvation the saints there at Philippi when they understood the gospel when they were convicted of their need of salvation the Holy Spirit made them alive when he quickened them those that were dead in trespasses and sin they were able to have fellowship they were able to understand that the good work which hath begun in them would continue, I promise, would continue until the day of Jesus Christ. A day yet to have come, even for us. A day yet in the future. So God is not going to change. God is immutable. God is eternal. God is omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. 
This is the character. This is the attributes of God. Unchangeable. And God has promised, through the pen of the Apostle Paul, He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We will think of that verse, the passage in, in the book of Hebrews, a very familiar passage, which we, it's following Hebrews chapter 11, the Hall of Faith, in such a, um, particularly during this particular time, this particular week, this particular month, we can think upon this verse. It's how we can think about the day of Christ. Verses 1 and 2, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with such a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which doth easily beset us, and let us run the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and is set down at the right hand of God. We must look to Jesus. He is the author of our faith. He is the one that's begun the good work in us. For without him, we are the most miserable, as Paul reminds us elsewhere in Scripture. And Paul continues his thought here in verse 7. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, he cared so much for the different people. We could think through his missionary journey all throughout the Mediterranean area, all throughout Asia, in, into Europe. He had them in his heart. They were at the forefront of his mind in the situation that he was in, in the prison, a Roman prison. Nothing like the prisons that we have in the United States. But he was there, rejoicing in God. I think it was, was uh, Tertullian, you know, that, that said, Tertullian was a church father of the 300s. He actually was the one that, um, if you want to use a, a coin, the word Trinity. Not that it didn't exist before Tertullian, but he's the one that came up with the word Trinity. In, but anyway, what Tertullian said, Tertullian said, when the heart, the legs feel no pain in the stocks, when the heart is in heaven. So even though Paul was in some type of, some extent of pain, physical pain, his heart, his mind was in heaven and with, with the saints in Philippi, in Colossae, go through all, all, all the all different churches that he had a part in. But God let him have a part in. His heart, his mind, his prayers were those saints in those areas of the world, those areas of the country where he could not be. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, the idea of a meat, this word here in verse 7, is the idea of observing the laws, righteous laws of God. He wants to think, he wants to think, he wants to understand, he wants to be wise for me to think. The idea of, you know, the, 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 in the mind's mind. He's got them. He holds them. He has them. The idea of having is, is to have or hold. He has them in the heart. The idea of the center of all physical and spiritual life is our heart. He wasn't distracted by the cares of this world. Inasmuch as both in my bonds, the physical bonds, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all 
are partakers of my grace. What a wonderful thing grace is. You know, we don't deserve God's grace. But God is rich in mercy. God is long-suffering. And he gave us something we don't deserve. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. Made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. God wants us to be walking and fellowshipping with him. Peter, he had to say, he, he was talking about rejoicing as well. The Apostle Peter, over in 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse, verse 13. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, we may be glad also with exceeding joy. His glory. When his glory shall be revealed. Right now, the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory of the Lord Jesus Christ is veiled. He has not returned yet. But when he comes back, not the meeting of the clouds, he comes back to the Mount of Olives, from the glory of God, the power of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, Jehovah, his salvation. When he comes, his glory will be revealed. For God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in my bowels of Jesus Christ. Again, here Paul has emphasized the fact how he cares deeply for them. The idea of record. We have a courthouse in Camden that has a bunch of records in it. We have a courthouse in Camden that has some courtrooms in it. But the idea of a record, a witness, you have a legal sense, you can have a historical sense, an ethical sense, I mean, the, the, the cloud of witnesses in Hebrews 11, what a record. They could testify of the great and wonderful things that the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And the list got longer last week. But the record, for God is my record. God, how He's, he's the one that knows the heart of Paul. God knows our hearts. God understands where we're, where we're at spiritually. He understands the battles we face. He understands our struggles. But God wants us to follow Paul as Paul followed Christ. We need to understand to have the heart for others. Not a selfish heart for ourselves, but the heart for others. And God is my record. How greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Christ. He had this longing desire. He had this, this, this empathy for them. He had this desire for them. The idea of the, the seed of the emotions, of the passions, the bowels of Christ. We think of in Romans uh, chapter 1 verse 9. I think we, we have how Paul tells the church at Rome how he is, how God is our, God is his witness. Romans 1, 9. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Again, all over scripture, the Apostle Paul is saying he's praying for those people who, with whom he is ministering. And this I pray, verse 9 of Philippians chapter 1, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. As far as pray, this word love is the, un, the word for unconditional love, agape. This I pray that your love may abound. When we think of abounding, this idea of abound. Now, I'll use two illustrations, one for the ladies and one for the, the men. Both, you'll, you'll get both of them easily, I'm sure. If someone's going to bake it, the idea of abounding, if the recipe calls for a cup of flour, and I don't 
I'm not a baker, so I think some recipes call for a cup of flour. And I go to the store and buy a bag of flour. And I just open the bag up, and I just turn it upside down, and I put my cup on my table. That cup is going to, that bag holds more than a cup of flour, I believe. But that's the idea. Abounding. More than, more than can contain. If I go to the gas station with my five-gallon bucket of gasoline, and I have my little 20-inch 20, 20 lawnmower, and he's gasoline, and I just invert that, that tank of, that five-gallon tank of gas, that lawnmower doesn't hold five gallons of gasoline. That's the idea of abounding. More than it can hold. That's, that's what it is. Let me abound. Beyond capacity. Beyond capacity, yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment. You know, again, we remember reminding in the passage in Colossians how, how, how Paul is in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, in verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. The Apostle Paul wanted to encourage those, those saints of Philippi with the fact that he was praying for them, that he was thinking of them, even though he was in a horrible condition. And so when we read the book of Philippians, among other, path, among, among other things we think about, we should think about how we could be like Paul and pray for others. Have this overflowing that it cannot contain it beyond capacity of our love and our concern for others. And his desire, the, 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 the point of the prayer, the point of his desire for the, the saints there at Philippi and the saints in other, other churches and other cities was that ye may approve things that are excellent. They may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. In, verse, in the verse 6, he mentioned about the day of Jesus Christ as well. Here in verse 10 as well, the day of Christ. The idea of may approve things that are accident. Think of a test. Think of a, what if you test something? You prove them. You give them an examination. You see if it's something is worthy, no matter what it might be. But the idea of proving things that are excellent. So we have a list of things to go under or go through. We have to see if those things, those things we want to do, those things we want to participate in, it could be all sorts of things. It would be different for everyone. But the Apostle Paul's desire, again, this is going back to the first century, and how things have changed since the first century. But the Apostle Paul was encouraging the Church of Philippi to approve things that are excellent. He wanted them to approve things. Give them a test. Why? Why did he want them to give a, give a test? Because he wanted them, he wanted to say that he may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Uh, the idea of, we, we know, of, you're familiar with the illustration of, of the wax, without wax. May be sincere, genuine, not something that's an imitation, not something that's been broken in pieces, not something that's been repaired. And God's an excellent, excellent repairing. He can mend our broken hearts. He can restore us to where we ought to be. Think of the 23rd Psalm. How God is our shepherd. How we don't have to want anything. How he, he can take care of us. But we must, as the Apostle Paul is saying, approve things that are excellent. We don't want to, we shouldn't be content with things that are mediocre, things that are second class in our lives. If there's something that needs to be put off, well, we must put it off. You know, think of the passage in Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed 
By the renewing of your mind, they may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's what we must do. We know the verses. We know the doctrine. But Paul was encouraging them, even though they knew it. He again was encouraging them and emphasizing the fact to approve things that were excellent. You know, the idea of, of this things that are excellent um, to carry through, carry something through. You know, that, the idea of Pharaoh has the idea of carrying, and Dia has the idea to, to, to carry some Dias through, Dia Pharaoh. Carry something through, approving things that are, that are excellent. And what else does the Apostle Paul want the saints of Philippi to be? What else does he want? What does he want us to do? What does God want us to bring from this passage? Be filled, in verse 11, be filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. What do we have to be filled with? We think of the fruits of the Spirit. We think of those fruits. You know, in John 15, verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. We're to be filled with the fruits, the fruits of righteousness. The idea of righteousness, the same word, you know, we have the idea of holiness comes from the same root word as righteousness. Be filled with righteousness. We don't, want, we don't want to be filled with something other than righteousness. Why would we? Why should we? We want to be filled with righteousness. And what's the source? What is the source? It's not in our own strength. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. But it's according to His mercy. being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and the praise of God. The idea of being filled. You know, to be, idea of being filled up, being complete. The idea, that's the idea of being filled. Being complete, being filled up. Be filled. The idea of righteousness. Same idea of, of, of glory in verse, in this very, the very verse, doxa. The majesty of the supreme ruler of the universe. His glory to the praise of God. When we think of the passage here in Philippians, a lot of things that each of us perhaps can benefit from as we study and as we read this book, ref reflect upon what God's apostle, whom God changed on the road to Damascus. He was an enemy of the cross and became a defender of the cross. And then he found himself in a prison in Rome and wrote this book to the church at Philippi because he wanted, he cared so much for those saints that he wanted them to be conformed to the image, the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now God is faithful. God is faithful. There's no, there's no changing with God. He's immutable. He doesn't change. So remember this evening, and throughout this week, to be like Paul. First, you know, we want to understand that God is still working in us. He's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He wants us to have that common fellowship one with another. He wants us to approve those things which 
are excellent so that we will understand and can pray for other people who need prayer, who need spiritual encouragement. Father, thank you for this evening. I want to thank you for this text that thou hast given to us. We know thou art faithful. Allow us to be confident and trust and know that you will perform those things that thou hast promised till the day of Jesus Christ. Bring to mind those friends and those loved ones that we have that are struggling, that are grieving, that need spiritual encouragement. Please be an encourager to Mrs. Ellis, Mrs. Liss. We ask that we give her a quick recovery. We think of Mrs. Bryson as well. Encourage her as she perhaps is a bit discouraged from week to week. We do want to ask that we give a special comfort to Pastor Spencer and he'll be returning later this week. Allow him to be uplifted with thy word and encouraged by the scripture. Please be with and encourage Mrs. Wren and, her and Joan and Stanley Wren as they are caring for her. Help Natanya to be able to move from her house in Iowa to her house in Massachusetts. Give Anastasia comfort from thy word. Allow Daniel to encourage her along with the five boys. To think of Amana and the work she has to do at school. Help her to catch up with her studies. And Evangeline, allow her to get back on track with her academic work in North Jersey. And please help Megaly be an encouragement to her. We know that she is grieving the loss of her mother as, long, as well as the other children and siblings in the family. But allow her to get back with her academic work. Allow a teacher, perhaps a fellow classmate, to come alongside of her who actually could understand and empathize with the tragedy that has come into her life, which is really a demonstration of thy grace. Allah Tolly and Isaiah, Sebastian, and Elijah to be comforted with thy word as they are still perhaps considering the life of their mother. We do ask that I would show them the glory, glorious promises of the resurrection. We do think of Theo, Nehemiah, Philemon, and Ariel as well. Although they may be older, they're still grieving the loss. Turn their, continue to turn these tears of sorrow into tears of joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take your hymnals and turn to hymn 403, the hymnal, the, the hymnal we use tonight. The, the inspiring hymnal, 403. Great is thy faithfulness, hymn 403. God is certainly faithful. Let's stand and sing, please. Hymn 403. Thy faithfulness, great is thy 
faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Thou changest with thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature with manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, Lord, seed and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercy I see. that endureth thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside pray thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, oh, I by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness. Father, we want to thank Thee that Thou art our hope, our comfort, and our joy. May Thy grace be ever-present with us throughout this week. Allow us to remember to be continually in prayer, to pursue those things which are excellent until the day of Thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.